Things are getting better. Hey, what's up? It's a figure hunter, and today I'm gonna give you an update on the Whoop 4.0 heart rate accuracy testing. So I did an initial review, an initial like sort of out of the gate first workout, and I'm gonna give some updates which are super important, so I want you to pay attention. As always, the Fake Gear Hunter channel is focused on testing devices for tracking CrossFit and high intensity interval training versus all the running, biking, and swimming videos are out there, so if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. I've got the Amazfit GTR3, which actually is an inexpensive AMOLED watch, which has got training load and aerobic and anaerobic effect and recovery time all built into it. So we're testing the heart rate accuracy and I'll give a full review and I'm actually super fired up about it. I've got the TickWatch Pro 3 Ultra review coming out and the Phoenix 6 Mineral Blue. I'm just gonna give a side-by-side -side comparison to the black. But all that aside, this is hot off the press. This is big time. So the first review, the first initial test I did was a big fail. And in that video, if you wanna get just sort of a more of an idea for why I wanna test the heart rate accuracy, why it's important to have accuracy for CrossFit training and high intensity interval training when you're you know, spiking your heart rate and bringing it down or you're spiking your heart rate and maintaining it at a super high level as relative to your percent of overall max heart rate. So watch that video if you want a little bit more backdrop. I also address some of the issues. I'm gonna give you a couple updates on those in this video as well. Um, but why are we testing these things? The WHOOP itself is just a sensor. It's a sensor that flows into a bunch of analytical data. And when you're doing CrossFit and high intensity interval training, because of those spikes and drops and you know high heart rate zones that you're hitting, you've gotta be able to see if it's accurate for really keeping up with a CrossFit or high intensity interval workout. So what we're gonna look at over the next few weeks is I'm gonna do in-depth in testing on the wrist, in-depth testing on the bicep, and then do a full review. And all of my testing has been upgraded to like level 4.0 from level 1.0. So I'm using the DC analyzer, I'm building Excel charts and spreadsheets, I'm looking at differences and variations over time. So that'll all flow into the final and great analysis for the wrist and the bicep. Um, also, Partnering with the 5K Runner. If you've never checked out the 5krunner.com's website, they do extensive written reviews about all sorts of devices on the market, all sorts of different testing variants, and they are really incredible at it, both reviewing tons and tons of content, providing a lot of details, but also very fantastic with giving sort of tidbits of rumors that are passing around the industry, and you can get sort of an insider scoop to what might be coming out and when. So they are fantastic. I'm gonna be providing most like video content as well as a CrossFit focus um, review type things, and they're gonna be doing a written review of all the different things that they're finding in the Whoop 4.0. So with that, let's dive into the content. So immediately out of the gate, I wanna address the issues I've heard of. So the issues with specifically to the uh, battery life and how long it's been lasting and some issues there as well as charging and the puck not charging and all of those different things. So, for, so far in my testing, I'm finding that it is actually holding a charge fine. I haven't done a full test of the full battery life and that's gonna come out more in the final review, but I'm gonna say it's three or four days, which is fantastic. The puck has been working fine, although I can confirm that it is slow to recharge. So it does take a little bit longer because it's a magnetic recharge versus, you know, direct um, direct recharge, but all those things have been great. I have heard that in the heart rate accuracy testing for runners that are running at higher heart rates, that the device is actually getting into what's called a cadence lock. So it'll track the heart rate fine up until you get to higher zones, and then it'll cadence lock with the run and look like a metronome. So I've heard it from somebody that's tested multiple devices and has tracked their running for a long period of time, and they saw that. They didn't see it in the Whoop 3.0, but they are seeing it in the Whoop 4.0. I'm sure that it's something they can fix in an you know, a software update, but at the same time, just wanted to report. So battery life has been good, puck charging has been fine, no real issues there like so many people have talked about, but the heart rate accuracy. So we wanna talk about the heart rate accuracy today, and what we're gonna talk about in this video is four workouts, so detailed analytics for four workouts. We're gonna look at comparison graphs, the DC analyzer results, as well as um, my analytical, like sort of Excel spreadsheets, and we're gonna talk about like the quantifiable results in three different ways. So we're gonna look at two things. We're gonna look at charts, 
the warm-up and the lift separated from the Metcon. In the CrossFit world, that's just the portion of time, where there's 15, 20, 25, 40. Um, it's the time that you're in high level intensity doing a multiple of different movements and um, trying to keep up with a high pace to get a good, you know, time all around. So we're going to look at charts for warm up and just the lifting portion of a, of a workout. And then we're going to look at charts, at charts for the intensity portion. And we're going to talk about the results in three ways, as I've said, multiple, you know, heart rate analytic videos. We're going to talk about the average heart rate comparison, percentage accuracy, average heart rate above 100 beats per minute, because every device should get you know, accurate in the under 100 beats per minute. So can it keep up with the right averages for, you know, the higher level heart rates? Number two, we're talking about how much is picking up, like percentage of accuracy and capturing zone four and zone five times. So the zones are related to your heart rate max and the zone four is 80 to 90% and the zone five is 90 to 100%. So how much is it actually accurately capturing your highest strain level of 80 to 100% of your max heart rate? And then last, we're gonna look at how much it's calculating accurately in the zone five. So specifically in your 90 to 100% of your max heart rate, because in all these things, your highest level of, of strain in the 80 to 100% of uh, your heart, your max heart rate is what determines your strain for the whoop. It's what determines your training load for Garmin. It's what determines the cardio load for Polar. It's what determines the aerobic and anaerobic training effect for Coros and Garmin and um, and even the Amazfit GTR3. Um, but it's what flows into recovery time calculates. What is primarily important when you're looking at the accuracy of the metrics that follow from the workout exertion. So it's gotta keep up with those things. So those are the three things we're gonna show results in, workout by workout, and then we're gonna talk about its final result in looking at some adjusted analytics. So with that, let's dive into the results. It's pretty exciting. Okay, so in this first workout, this is warm up in the beginning and then bench presses. So you can see it didn't keep up at different points in all of these charts except one, the um, chest strap, the H10 chest strap is gonna be in red and the whoop is gonna be in light blue. So all of them, the chest strap is red, the whoop light blue. So this you can see is just a lot of variation. Um, it's obviously, it's not incredibly accurate, but maybe some of the averages are accurate, but let's look at the Metcon. So this is that first Metcon where it was macho mans and double unders and it was an increasing number of macho mans, which is included of three cleans, two front squats and three shoulder overheads. And as the rounds went on, it got increasingly more and more inaccurate. And it really didn't keep up with the intensity of the workout at any point. So in this first workout, the average heart rate above 100 beats per minute percent accuracy is 73%. The zone four and five, 80 to 100% of heart rate max is 24%. And then zone five, it didn't capture it all when there was um, a healthy amount. So in the second workout, this is where the colors are a little bit different. The chest strap is in orange and the whoop is in dark blue. This is just warm up and then some deadlifts. It wasn't, you know, it was like heavy deadlifts, or just, you know, two set, uh, two reps. So it wasn't a lot of heart rate exertion. You can see that it's a little bit all over the place. Um, so not really good clarity there, but this is a rowing and assault bike where you had like a four minute rest and a three minute rest and a two minute rest in between different lengths of intervals. And you can see that it follows pretty well along except for in the heart rate drops, but in the peak and intense zones, it's doing great. And you can see the results. Average heart rate above 100 beats per minute. And this is the whole workout. And then we're gonna to transition to Metcon only focus for the analytics. 80% accurate, zone four and five, 88% accurate, and zone five, 72% accurate. So it's picking up more. Now, this is just a warm up. This is just sort of like I was doing a bunch of different things, but doing it in sort of like a round style warm up. And you can see that the whoop was not terribly off except for in a couple points. Um, but, you know, chest straps in red, whoops in light blue. And then this is the Metcon itself. So three rounds of rowing, then do deadlifts, and then box jumps, and then headstand push ups. And it, it really flowed the general flow of the workout. Obviously, it wasn't correct with the chest strap, but the most important thing is it was in the higher, you know, heart rate ranges. So the results for that average heart rate 98%, and this is just the Metcon only. Zone four and five, almost 98% accurate, and that's really impressive. And then zone five, 73% accurate. So it's not quite keeping up with the highest level peaks. And then for the workout today, it was heavy back squats. And for whatever reason, the whoop, it, you know, it was four reps at like really heavy weight, 
with uh, two minute rest in between. So you can tell that the chest strap was obviously picking up the intensity of the heart rate change with each of the four reps. Um, and the whoop was not keeping up at all. So this is going to indicate that we've got to test intense changes in heart rate to see how it keeps up with future workouts. But so that's an indicator there, but this is the, the Metcon. So it was a bunch of wall balls and then pull-ups. And then it was two, it was like air squats, pull-ups, and then air squats and pull-ups. And then it was four rounds of assault bike and then pull-ups. So just lots of pull-ups, but there wasn't as much wrist flex in this one. The wall balls obviously would, and then the pull-ups should cause some variation, but it's keeping up in a good way there. So the final result with that one is 92% average heart rate and the zone four and five was 97%. The zone five I listed as negligible because it was just barely over. Um, I would hit burnout on a lot of the different movements. So it just didn't quite, quite crack, crack into the zone five for this one. So I'm wiping out that result. So with that, we're seeing a lot more promising results. So let's talk about what we're seeing. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that one of the things we really have to look at is the only workout that it truly failed in was the workout that had barbell cycling. So obviously barbell cycling is at the essence of CrossFit. And so we want to make sure that when you cycle a barbell in your Metcon that it's keeping up with it, or even if you're cycling a barbell for some portion of the lift, can can the whoop keep up with it because that's of primary importance. So we're gonna really look at some of the movements specifically that it can and can't keep up with in the final results. So boom, I mean, it is getting more accurate. It is keeping up. Obviously in the warm up and lifting portions, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like all over the place. So is it keeping up with the average across? Yeah, similar. Is it keeping up with like your heart rate zones and the lifting and warm up portions, which aren't as high level exertions? Yes, some because it's just sort of doing the opposite thing. And I don't, doesn't look like a lag time issue where it's like the heart rate on a chest strap is catching up and then, oh, the, here's the optical heart rate catching up behind it. It just looks like it's opposite. And as I've watched it throughout workouts, it's just sort of opposite. But in the intense portions, it's actually keeping up. So I first did that steady state, you know. Um, rowing and assault bike and it kept up it kept up really well there because there was a rest interval in between certain lengths of time and certain lengths of rows that sort of thing um so it kept up well there and it's been keeping up with some of the wrist flex now in these last two workouts there wasn't as much wrist flex there wasn't a lot of it as there was in that first one but there still was headstand push-ups and pull-ups and i was wearing a hand strap and you know, there was still, you know, deadlifts doesn't really exert the wrist that much, but there was still some of that built into it. So we're going to have to keep testing to see how it is holding up. But what I will say, if I, and what I'll do is I'll do like eight tests and I'll exclude one that looks significantly off. And we'll talk about that in the final review. If we exclude the first test, the first workout, just wipe it off. And if we exclude one negligible zone five, because it was like 30 seconds and then like 10 seconds. So it was like, Oh, it's only 30% accurate, but that's not really fair because it was just such a short period of time. So if we exclude that one variable and we take out those the first workout and drop that off the map, and then we take out the one variable that just is not analytically worthwhile, it's actually turning out 82% accurate. So that's way better than was on the wrist in the first WHOOP testing and WHOOP 3.0 and 2.0. So we're getting better, and then we're gonna go into the bicep and it's gonna get even more better. So with that, please stay tuned for more. This is the Fit Gear Hunter. Thanks so much for watching.